Lesson 45 That You May Know the Truth In today's lesson we begin a new study in the Gospel of Luke, and I know the Lord will bring a blessing upon us as we look together at this most wonderful account of the life and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Luke gives us another accurate account of the truth concerning Jesus, and in this first chapter he introduces us to several miracles associated with the birth of John the Baptist and Jesus the Christ. Luke writes to a nobleman named Theophilus and says he wants to write to him an exact account of the truth about the things he had learned. Luke wants to tell this man all about Jesus. It is interesting that Luke starts his account immediately with several miraculous events. We might think that when we present the story of Jesus we would leave the miracles to the last until we have presented other things more easily received and accepted by the hearer. In fact, the great difficulty we all have is with the acceptance of the miraculous. And if we cannot at first accept God's supernatural intervention, then whatever else we may learn or read will lose its appeal and credibility. When Zachariah sees the angel Gabriel in the temple, who tells him he and his wife Elizabeth shall be given a son, even though they are old and beyond childbearing years, Zechariah finds the words most difficult to believe. The angel causes Zechariah to become mute due to his unbelief. Only when the boy is born and he provides the family with the name John is his mouth miraculously opened by the Lord and he is able to speak again. The angel informed Zechariah that his child John would prepare the hearts of Israel to turn to the Lord. The angel Gabriel later appears to the young maiden named Mary and tells her she will have a son and he will be called Jesus and he shall reign on the throne of David with an everlasting kingdom. Mary is perplexed because she knows that she is a virgin and virgins cannot give birth. The angel then explains that the Holy Spirit shall cause her to become pregnant and that nothing shall be impossible with God. He also informs her of her cousin Elizabeth who was already six months along in her pregnancy. Mary then quickly went to visit her cousin and saw that indeed she was with child. The child in Elizabeth's womb leaped when Mary spoke and this brought forth a word of blessing from Elizabeth upon Mary. Then Mary also lifted her voice in a magnificent word of praise to God for the wonderful kindness God had shown to the poor and humble and for his mercies and promises sent to Israel. The remainder of this first chapter of Luke's Gospel gives us the account of the birth of John the Baptist and how he was named by his father Zechariah. Not only were the friends and relatives amazed by Elizabeth having a son in her old age, but that Zechariah had written down that his name was to be John. No one in their family was called by that name and after Zechariah wrote down John is his name, his tongue was loosed and he was able to speak. This also amazed all those present. Zechariah then filled with the Holy Spirit praised God and prophesied concerning his son's future ministry of turning Israel back to God and preparing the way for the coming of the Lord. He spoke of the salvation and redemption that was coming to Israel through the house of David. This prophecy points to Jesus, the Messiah, who would be the means of salvation to God's people. The spirit of this prophecy would be later delivered by his son John to the nation of Israel and then fulfilled by the presentation of Jesus to Israel. In looking in review upon the first chapter of Luke, we notice that there are seven distinct miracles. Number one, the appearing of the angel to Zechariah in the temple. Number two, Zechariah struck mute because of his unbelief. Three, the pregnancy of Elizabeth in her old age. Four, the appearing of the angel to Mary to announce the birth of Christ. Five, the conception of the child in Mary's womb. 6. The opening of Zechariah's mouth to speak after writing down the name of his child. 7. 
the Spirit of God causing Zechariah to speak words of revelation about Jesus and John. In the introduction to this gospel, we are to learn that everything about Jesus shows that he is unique from all other men. Everything surrounding his entrance into this world was miraculous. Even the birth of John the Baptist, the man God sent forth to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. We learn from the miracles associated with Jesus' birth that only God's intervention into this world and into the affairs of men will bring about the salvation that we all so desperately need. When God intervenes miraculously, it brings great astonishment, fear, and often doubt. That is why Gabriel had to say to both Zechariah and to Mary, Do not fear, when they were so fearful in his presence. Many of us are just like Zechariah that finds God's revelation just too difficult to believe. But when we do believe, then God opens our mouths and prays, for then we discern by the Spirit of God the great work of salvation that God has planned for all people. I hope you are praising God today because you have believed in the Redeemer, sent by God into the world to wash away our sins. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people. Luke chapter 1 verse 68.